Hi there, it's William from Boxer 2 Valve, and we are in the final phases of this project that's been dragging on for a long time. And uh, let's uh, keep rolling along here. I'm gonna, I've, I've collected all, all my parts uh, pretty much here, and I think I thought of everything, so it's just a matter of getting started and putting things together in the right order. When we took this motor apart, we found that the lifters were all pitted and needed replacement. So I've got some brand new lifters here. I'm going to start by putting those in and put a little bit of this assembly lube on here from Likomoly. It's the LM48. Works really well. Shake that up a bit. And then a little bit goes a long way up with this stuff. Put it all around on, on the sides and on the face. Just put those guys in. And on the other side as well. So if you've been watching the, along with us uh, as we've gone through this thing, you know that the boys here took the block apart and they, they uh, replaced the main bearings. What we're going to do now is replace the rod bearings. And so I've still got the rods from when I took it apart. I, labeled everything left to right and all that. Now these bearings, they really don't look bad. They've got no abnormal wear, but since it's got new bearings and new everything else, what the heck, might as well put some new ones in as well. So let's, let's do that. You need to very, be very careful that you don't damage anything. If you can just sort of like dislodge the bearing shell by pushing onto the side of it, and then carefully just pop the old bearing out like that. And then you want to clean everything very, very thoroughly and use a lint-free towel or something like that to make sure you don't leave any sort of um, debris or anything on there. It has to be absolutely clean. And I, in fact, I'm going to cl also clean them in the solvent tank and blow everything off, but it's a very important part of the step. So just put, I just push that a little bit to the side, and that moves it up and then pops right out. So you're not doing any damage to anything. Just going to rinse these guys off real quick. So this would obviously be a good time to also re replace the wrist pin bushings, but I did check them out and they're, they're, they're well within uh, spec, they're nice and round, they're not egg shaped at all and the, um, the old wrist pins have no real wear either so I'm just going to go ahead and run them. If they were out of spec a little bit we would certainly um, be changing that out. Okay, now we can push the new rod bearings into place. So here you get on the, on the uh, crank journals, you want to ensure absolute cleanliness in there. And I know that it has all been cleaned, but still just give it one more caref careful look. And that looks great. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of this LM48 on the rod bearings as well, just so it gets the initial lubrication until oil pressure is introduced. All right, so you first just take the, the small end of the bearing, the pin holes facing forward, and lay that onto the crankshaft like so. Then you want to reach around the other side and push on the back side of the bearing with something like a piece of wood. I'm using the handle of a brush in this case, but a wooden dowel or something like that. Just makes things a little bit easier. So by putting the piece of wood behind there, I can hold the cap vertically without it falling off and now take the rod and just push it in together like that. It snaps into place. And now before letting go of anything, now I'm going to put this rubber band back in here like this to hold it in place. And that frees up my hands to put the bolts in. 
Always use new connecting rod bolts. These should never be reused. So just can go in and using this uh, 12 point 10 millimeter serrated socket, go ahead and screw the bolts in. And there we go, so that's all set. And now I'll go ahead and do the exact same thing on the other side. All right, so that's the, that takes, takes care of that. Both rods are installed. The reason for the rubber bands is you don't want the rod to fall down onto the case by no means at all because it, it has enough weight and mass to, to put a dent in there and you might have an oil leak, it won't fit right. Just always remember to, to support the rods. If you don't have a rubber band, you can use a, a piece of wire or a zip tie or lots of things. So this is the, this is the exciting part now because now we're going to put the new cylinders in. So we've got a set here of Siebenrock cylinders. Let's have a look what's inside the box. Cut the seal here. Here are the assembly instructions and the piston rings. There we go. So the pistons is placed inside like that. This is the power kit extra with the uh, pre-installed stainless steel pushrod tubes. Very cool stuff. So we need to just push out the piston. And then we'll be installing the rings onto the piston and installing the cylinder. It's all pretty self-explanatory. Start with the bottom ring, then the middle ring, then the top ring. And have a close look at the rings because they are sometimes marked top or bottom. This need the super glasses, but it's very small. It's, but you can read it. It says top. So that's where that has to go. Also marked top. Okay, success. So to recap on that, you put the, the rings in, um, in the proper order and look very carefully. They are all stamped top and you definitely want them to go in there. So here's kind of the game plan. We're going to um, install the piston into the cylinder and then uh, straight away go ahead and install the cylinder and then put the head on right away too. I wanted to just talk a minute about the cylinder heads. We've already gone through and reconditioned the cylinder heads. They've been uh, vapor blasted. We've got new valves, new guides. We didn't really go through the procedure because if you have the tools to do that kind of work, then you probably don't need to watch a video. So send your heads to somebody who has the tools because that's the most important part of that part of the uh, process or send them to us. We can recondition your heads and make them look like that. So they're all really good. They really did kind of need it too. Here's the valves that came out and they, they, you know, have a nice ridge going on here and some definite wear on the stems. And uh, yeah, it was just a good idea to put new ones in since we're going to all the trouble. So let's keep moving on this. So the, the, it, it's recommended to very lightly oil the cylinders and the piston skirts only. You don't need much. Just put a little bit in and very light oiling on the cylinders. It's really just a few drops. And then on the skirts of the pistons as well, a little bit of oil, just like that. Uh, a little bit more maybe, just a tiny bit more. You don't need to put anything on the rings. 
All right, this is gonna be the left, the left hand cylinder and the piston is marked with an arrow and that arrow has to face the exhaust valve, it has to go front to the front. So the orientation is gonna be like this. There's a slight chamfer on the cylinder, so I find it pretty easy to put the cylinders in from the bottom up. Before you put them in though, you wanna make sure that you've oriented the rings at 120 degrees apart from each other. So you have one facing this way, for example. There we go, something like that. Okay, for this, a rig compressor is pretty handy. You can, can get by without too, but definitely is a good way to go. Okay, basically go kind of one ring at a time until you have them all snapped in completely. Just take your time, you don't want to force anything. Okay, so just going to push the piston in just enough so the rings are all inside like that, but the, um, the bore for the wrist pin is fully exposed. New wrist pins are supplied in the little box that comes in one of the pistons, as well as new clips. Well, the clips are different than the ones that came out. The other ones that the ones that came out had like a were snap ring type clips. These are the um, internal style. So you need to you need to have a, pl a plan in place when you before you put put this in because of the way that the um, engine is curved. So I'm going to want to put the pin in from the front, and so that means I'm going to first put a clip. In, in this side here is a lot easier to do when the cylinder's off the bike. Okay, once that's snapped in, here again a bit of oil inside and on the wrist pin. I'm just going to put the wrist pin in like that, just that far for the moment. All right, next we can go ahead and put pushrod tubes on. These have a little line on them, and the line has to be facing down. They go on like this. Okay, there's also the O-ring needs to be installed on the base. Could, do, could have done this earlier, it doesn't really matter too much. Gonna have everything ready to go. My head gasket here ready to go, and get the cylinder head ready to go too. Okay, the last thing we're gonna do is put some sealant. I'm using this uh, RTV silicone clear from from uh, Worth. There's a lot of different kinds of products out there you could use for this, but the idea is you're gonna put a thin layer of silicone around this face here and be very careful not to overdo it in this area here. Just a very, very thin bit around the outside. The O-rings allow the O-rings to seal this area here. And the reason is because or there's an oil passage here that lubricates the rocker arms. And if you get too much silicone in there, you could block that off and could cause some unpleasant problems. So very sparing. This, this can works kind of like a cheese whiz can. You can, I can just get a little bit out there, but really not much. I'm just going to really put some out and then more or less spread it around with my fingers because I you just simply don't need much at all. And what I do, not so much for sealing, but a little bit for sealing, but so that the, these uh, slide in very, very light fill of silicone on the pushrod seals. It gives it extra sealing, but mainly it's going to help them kind of slide in and seat real nicely. Okay, so now we've got pretty much, we're ready to rock here. 
slide the cylinder on. One last detail, you want to have the cylinder at top dead center compression stroke, so that would mean that it's going to be with the rod all the way out, but with the valves closed. And I can see the um, camshaft, so that's where I want it to be, right there. Okay, so TDC compression. And now this rubber band has done its job, so I'm just going to snip that away. Push that in, I'm trying to move sort of quickly here where that silicone sets up, and push my wrist pin in like that. It's a good idea to put a rag um, in here, something like that, so in case the wrist pin flings away, it won't go inside the motor. Just make sure that that's firmly seated. Okay, that looks good. Now we could push this in the rest of the way. Now these head gaskets can go on one of two ways, the right way and the wrong way. And so in your, when you're trying to hurry up and get this done before everything dries up, make sure you pay attention to this. Um, basically the deal is, you can see there's a closer, a smaller, smaller space here on that side of the stud and the gasket reflects that here, this distance here versus that one. So the head gasket goes on this way. So verify that the, the holes perfectly line up here. I've already cleaned all these parts in, in advance, so the pushrod tubes go in first. And then on this model, there's these washers that go on like that. And then these go on. All right, there we go. And one other thing is you'll notice there's some little dots on the end of the rocker shafts here that they need to be facing out. So just make sure everything's all correct. And now we're ready to start tightening bolts. Just a little bit at a time on each of the bolts as you draw it in. Make sure that the push rod is, is inside of the socket of the adjuster. So now you can see I've got a nice little squish coming out around, very minimal, so I even didn't overdo it with the sealer, but um, it's definitely got it in time so it was still nice and pliable. Um, and this is all looking pretty good. So I'm going to now torque the heads. Of course, I'm going to, I'm going to loosen up these adjusters too. I always start with 15 newton meters and then increase it to 25. And tighten in the cross pattern like this. Okay, so that's all good. So while we're at it, we can go ahead and just set the valves on this side too, and then go over to the other side. This version of the rocker arm assembly is the latest version basically on these bikes. And the, the end float is adjusted by some shims here. And there's is a little bit of up and down movement on here, which is not really ideal. Um, I would actually like to make some adjustments to this, which I will do probably when I retorque the heads at about five or 600 miles. Um, I don't have all the shim sizes at the moment, but the um, rocker arms uh, looked pretty good on there. So just probably have a little bit of wear in there and it'll, be, it'll run fine, but I'll, I'll do that at the next service. And if you see excessive movement. That's not really what I'd call excessive. You can see how the oil kind of puddles up there. You want to basically have a 
like a not a tight fit, not a loose fit, just kind of like a like a perfect fit. So we're gonna we're, we'll deal with that at another time. All right. So the next thing we'll do is we'll set the valves kind of. Uh, a little bit on the loose side because things are going to settle in over the first few miles. I've got two different ones here, a 15 and a 20, 0 0.15, 0 0.20 millimeter. And the exhaust gets the 0.2. Um, so let's go ahead and run that adjuster down like so. Sort of start to feel a little tension. Just sort of, there we go. All right, so I can feel it, it's a little bit snug now when I tug on it. But if I press on the backside on the, where the adjuster is, it gets loose. That's pretty much how I really normally would want to set it in a, in a perfect, uh, you know, in a run-in motorcycle. But since this one is got the new valves and all that stuff, I'm actually going to go a little bit looser in this particular case they'll have a tendency to tighten up. Okay, so it was a little bit of drag on the feeler gauge right now. When I push on the backside of the rocker, it like wants to almost fall out. That's how I want to set it with this new cylinder head. And when I go in to re retorque the cylinder heads at 600 miles, then I will set them as I showed just a moment ago. But right, I think that's good for, for what we're doing at the moment, considering that things are going to settle in pretty quickly when the motor starts. Same thing, little drag and kind of, on, kind of loose once I push on the rocker. Okay, cool. That's good to go. So let's keep moving right along here. And I'm going to put these really cool valve covers on, which I think is really going to really set the bike off. Look at it. It's got these polished fins, just like all this here. And I mean, pretty slick. Kind of the, the round, the old round style valve cover, I think, goes well with the whole theme of the bike. So these are from Seaman Rock, these valve covers, and they supply the studs um, separately for packaging reasons. You need to put the studs in yourself. And so don't make the mistake of putting them in all the way because you might wind up with them a little bit too short. So just sc screw it in. Uh, most of the way and make sure you put a gasket on there just just for testing and set this on and you, you want to have enough protruding here so you can get the, the thickness of the nut and the washer you don't want them to be in too far I can go in a little bit more than that I think safely is like 23 millimeters. And that should be pretty good. I'd say 23, 24 millimeters is probably what you want to do. But double check it, make sure it's going to work for you. Once you've got that figured out, then you can, then you can uh, put these in with a little bit of Loctite and that'll hold them in place. There we go. 24 millimeters is what I'm going to go with. Okay, that's ready to install, and I'm just going to set that aside and go over to the gasket now again. So these gaskets are, they'll, they'll work either way. They'll fit both, they'll fit both ways, basically. But um, they'll fit right down. You'll find that one side is really smooth to the touch and the other side is more rough and the rough side is what you want against the cylinder head 
And what works b the best, I think, is to have the gasket actually s glued onto the head. So it, the gasket stays with the cylinder head. And then as the years go on and you do your maintenance, the gasket stays on the head and the, the uh, soft side or the shiny side is gonna release from the valve cover. And also by having the valve cover glued on, it's gonna prevent it from pushing out because that happens sometimes uh, as well. And then you can get leaks and all that sort of thing. So my kind of go-to product on, on any kind of gasket like this is, is this gasket cinch. It's, it's a really pretty cool stuff and it's perfect for this. And so I'm gonna put that here, pap the paper side up, in this case on that piece of cardboard. And then without g going too crazy with the, the amount, just get, get a, a nice coating on the g gasket. Spread that out nicely. Let that set for a while. And just a little bit on here as well. So we'll let that tack up a little bit. And while that's doing that, we'll get ready to start putting the carburetors back on too, on this side. So the, the uh, tube that goes from the cylinder head to the um, carburetor, there are two kinds. There's the, uh, the outside diameter is what we're talking about when we say 52 millimeters or 54 millimeters. Either one will actually work in this application, but on the mono levers, they did go to the, the uh, rubber that was two millimeters larger in outside diameter. So these are the 54s. You could use the 52s also, but we're going to stick to what's correct and run these. So pop that on there like so. And I've already cleaned up the clamps. They seem to be in really pretty good condition. Okay, well, that's just a little bit of just, I can't just stand around and do nothing. So I think that's enough time for this gasket. The gasket cinch has tacked up a little bit. So we'll go ahead and set that on like that. Oh yeah, it just sticks right on. You can feel it doing its magic. Cool, and I got all new hardware too. A stainless steel cap nut, new wave washer for the stud here. And new washers and nuts. Just gotta step back and look at that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> all right, back to the carburetor. All right, so we got the carburetor here. This has already been rebuilt and we went through and put a lot of new parts in and all that in a previous episode. So now it's time to install. So easy enough to do is attach the throttle cable first. Okay, just gonna set the adjusters so that there's a couple three millimeters of play right there. We're gonna have to adjust everything properly, obviously, once we get the bike running. But I think got the base adjust is pretty close. So that's, that's fine for right now. Choke cable, same sort of deal. There we go, there's that play we're looking for. Alrighty. Okay, so I'm also replacing these 60 millimeter, that's the ODA on these uh, other rubbers. And best way to do this, I find, is push them on all the way like that. Get your clamps in place. Like that. So everything's loose. Slide that onto the carburetor. 
and then just slide the rubber up like that. And then on these carburetors, I'd like to go just a slight bit in, a few degrees in from, from the vertical. Just gives you a little bit more space for your legs and stuff like that if you do that. And you just kind of get back, look from the rear and see. So just, just a smidgen from vertical. Everybody has their own take on that, I think. But that's the way I've been doing it. That's the way I was taught to do it way back when I was young. And so that's a long time ago. All right, so the clamps are all kind of nicely symmetrically placed and we're all set here with our cables, the carburetors on there. Still need to do the fuel hose. I'll come back to that later once we have the tank installed. And now I'm gonna go over to the other side and bring it to this state before we move further. In other words, we're gonna put the cylinder, the piston head on, valve cover, carburetor, and then we'll keep cranking along on getting this bike started. So that, that was that. I got the other cylinder installed, carburetor, and um, exact same procedure as before. And actually, I went ahead and put the battery in too because there's really not much to that. And um, so that's in. Now we can actually, next thing we can do is let's check to make sure that we have we, the oil pressure before we get, go any further. So I've disconnected uh, the Terminal 15 on the coil, just for safety. There's no plug wires in it right now. Um, I did put about two and a half liters of 15W50 liquid moly oil in there, new filter. And so we got the spark plugs out. We're just gonna turn on the ignition here or, and uh, see what happens. There it goes. All right, so oil pressure light went out. And now it's a good idea to, I you know, went ahead and put the valve covers on because I wanted to apply that adhesive, the gasket singe, while everything was clean before the oil got on there. But uh, it's a good idea to actually take the valve cover off and just make sure that you've got good oil coming through. Um, at the rocker arm. So let's go ahead and take the time to do that real quick, just so we kind of have, have, have a look at that. There you go. You got what you're looking for. So pretty happy with with the fact that we got oil kind of splooging out of both rocker arms. So that's good. We'll do that on the other side too. I'll do that in a bit, but um, I think we're pretty confident that we've got oil pressure. So on this side, and that's a nice thing to know. As you can see also how the gasket's stuck to the cylinder head. It's on there firmly, nothing to mess with, just comes off easily and it'll be serviceable for a long, long time. Okay, that's that side checks out too. So we're good to go. We got good oil pressure and uh, pretty happy with that. The, running, the, the list of things to do is sh getting shorter and shorter all the time, but how about something fun? We're gonna put on the exhaust system. We got a completely brand new stainless steel exhaust from k -N, and it's really very, very nicely made. Beautiful. So. I have one, I have these mufflers on, on my R100 RS 
and uh, they really, they sound good and really nice stuff. So this is a complete system. So we'll put that on this bike and then finish up a couple other little details and man, we're getting close. Also went ahead and got some new exhaust nuts because the uh, originals were kind of marred up from being on and off a few times and what the heck, everything looks so nice. So um, the threads on these cylinder heads look really awesome. Make sure to make sure they stay that way forever. We're going to put a little bit of this uh, LM508 on the exhaust nuts. It's um, a copper based uh, NIC's paste that works really well. Being a dissimilar metal from the aluminum, I think it works better than than the uh, aluminum content NIC's does in this application. And it holds up to the heat really well. So I'm just going to put a nice little layer on the inside of the threads here, all the way around, without getting too crazy with the amount, just sort of filling in the, the threads. And wipe off any sort of excess here. The easiest way to do it, I think, is to put the, the exhaust nut on first. And so you've got the, this, this uh, pressure ring goes on like that and the one with the split, the champ, the uh, compression ring goes on second. And then you can just go ahead and screw those on, but don't tighten them up, just sort of loosely like that. And do the same thing on the other side. So I'm gonna just uh, pre-assemble the header pipes like this, leave the clamps loose. And there are two versions of these header pipes. This is for the version without the oil cooler. And then there's another version that has like a little jog in it here. So that if you have a bike with an oil cooler, it gives you plenty of room to deal with that. But since we don't have an oil cooler, this is the right one for this bike. And we'll start by sliding these into the cylinder heads. Kind of walk it in until you feel it bottom out. It's interesting to note that you just with my hand, when I tighten the nut, it's already clamped in there. And so that just goes to show you that you don't need to over tighten these nuts. I mean, by hand right now, it's already clamped down. Of course, I'll give it a little bit more, but that's, it's a very effective system. It doesn't need, uh, even though the wrench is this big, long thing, it doesn't have to get a lot of torque to, to be tight. This is the next part, this is the collector. I, we call it the H pipe for obviously obvious reasons, but it's really cool. It replaces that kind of big uh, monstrous collector on the um, mono lever. And the really neat thing too is it all goes together with a really precision fit so there's no need for any gaskets like on the original. And so it just makes maintenance a whole lot easier. Now, you could perhaps put some silicone on these, these joints, but my experience has been it's really not necessary. Um, if you get some leakage, you can always, it'll come apart easily enough, but the fit is so nice that it just really goes together and seals well just by itself. And it's got the um, stop here welded on for the side sense. Why well, I haven't put the side sense spring on yet because it would just have gotten in the way. All right, got the clamps on there, and now we'll put this in place. I'm just gonna make sure I have it fully seated with this very soft mallet here. Just give it a couple of taps, but I think I got it all the way in. A little bit more. Okay, I think everything's looking pretty good. Now let's see how the mufflers fit. Leaving everything loose until we're happy with the way everything fits. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and put, put the muffler on. First thing though is I'm going to put a little bit of that Liquid Molly LM508 on these screws just so in case just so we don't have any problems down the road when we want to take it apart again someday 
the fasteners are stainless, but it's, they could still get some crud in there. So this is gonna, just think this is probably a pretty good idea. It looks pretty sharp. It really does. All right. So I'll put the other muffler on and you just kind of have to wiggle and line everything and then tighten all the clamps. And that's pretty much all that's involved in this. Okay, so I've got the exhaust system all in place. The clamps are all kind of the way I want them to be. And, you know, it's really a nice, nice fit. I just, it's gonna take, I just wanna really take some time and make sure that everything is aligned because you can see everything's still loose and all that stuff. And I mean, I'm not gonna put you through the agony of watching that because it's like watching paint dry, uh, pretty much uh, the same equivalent. But believe me, I'll get it all sorted out. It's just, you know, I'm pretty particular. I'll make sure that the mufflers are all exactly lined up perfectly and all that sort of thing. Um, that's a, something you, you know, anyone installing the system would need to do. So let's just move on to the next thing. It's really, really the, the list is increasingly small, so we'll get the exhaust sorted out. Okay, I left the um, shifter linkage off so far um, I, because the, um, the original one that came off is kind of, kind of beat looking and it's been abused and used over the years. We have a couple of really nice replacements. This one is made with the plated steel and then we also have a stainless steel version. They're both pretty cool. Um, probably gonna just opt for the regular steel one on, on this bike. It looks a heck of a lot better than, than the original one. Now they do come with new, new ball studs and the on this particular model, the front ball stud is like riveted on. It's not a replaceable part. So we'd have to drill it out. Ah, you know, the, I'm not too worried about that. I'm gonna probably just run that one. The rear one could take it or leave it, but I do have new hardware, so I'll probably just replace the, the one on the shifter. But in any case, you, they, these do come pre-greased from where they're assembled. However, I think that is not a, usually, I don't find there's a ton of grease in there, so it's not a bad idea to just take a part no matter what, unclip this wire piece and then pull it out like that. And then to remove it, it's not always the easiest thing to do just by hand, but if you just pop it into the vise, for example, like this, grab onto the nut there. Then you'll be able to pop it off a lot easier. And then they come with new dust seals. So I'm just gonna take the front one and pop that off. And slip it on this old ball there. Okay, yeah, so as I've seen in the past, a little bit of grease in there, but not a ton. So a little bit of LM47 liquid molly in here. Just put a little bit in each one here. And they can cut, sort of compare the length to the old one for a base measurement. And it looks pretty much the same. So I'm just gonna start with that, see where we wind up. We just want to ha have a good relationship in height to the um, foot peg. That looks, looks about right. We'll know a lot more once we test ride it, but I think that's pretty much the way I like it. So that, we'll run with that and put the clips back in. All right, and then we'll just go ahead and tighten these lock nuts a little bit. 
And once we go for a ride, if you determine that the shifter should be a little higher, a little lower, it's very easy to make adjustments there. All righty, so let's see. Next thing I think we need to do is um, spark plug wires. I made up one already, and we also go through the process in one of our earlier videos. Basically, what we do is we sell the wire in one meter length, and that's enough to make two wires. I just basically cut them straight in half, and that works out really well. We've got a couple different kinds of wire. Some of them is silicone um, sheathing, and some of it is PVC. Now, both of them are copper core. They're, so there are silicone core wires, but stay really far away from those when it comes to these motorcycles. You want to have a copper core wire. The only difference is in the, in the sheathing. The, the, um, the silicone is a little more pliable. Now, there's, um, the, the, you can buy pre-made cables from BMW, and they're, they're rather pricey. They're only available from BMW. Um, so we, we just make them up ourselves, and with this really high quality wire from Buru, and the spark plug connectors are from Baru too. And then we've got a couple of different ways you can go with creating the end that plugs into the coil. There's this one, which is soldered on. And we also have another type here, which can be screwed on. So if you don't have a soldering iron, or you don't want to solder, or you can't, or whatever, this is a totally viable way to do it. You just would basically screw this into the end of the cable, turn it until it screws all the way in, and fold down these little flaps and you've got a really tight connection. Wire screws into these connectors, the screw inside, just twist it till it gets really tight and that's it. So I'm just gonna put this together really fast and show you how, so just gonna take and slice off a little bit of the outer insulation from the wire. Sometimes, well, most of the time, you'll still you'll get a little bit of this fiber fuzz there. You can just kind of clip that away as well, Care, being careful not to cut any of the wire. All right. Now, this is the solder type. You just slip that on, and wire goes through the hole. And you can see how that looks. I've got about four or five millimeters of wire sticking up out of the hole. Top of the connector has a little recess in it, a little cavity, so to speak. So I'm just gonna fill that up with solder. Once that gets hot enough, we'll just fill that little divot up, just like that. Just heat the connector, not the wire, and then wait for the solder to melt. The, the, the solder needs to melt when it touches the piece that you're soldering, not the soldering iron. That's uh, pretty, pretty important. All right, so now we've made a nice little blob of solder there, and I'm just gonna snip the end of the wire off, and then just go on a belt sander or a grinding wheel, whatever you have, and just kind of flatten that out for a nice connection. I'm going to go run and do that real quick next door. Yeah, so there you have it. And that's actually a, a, a totally good connection. Um, you get a lot of penetration because of that little divot in there. All right. Th to do this properly, you need uh, this, this cover for the uh, coil connection. This is sold separately. This cover comes with the Baru spark plug connector. And by the way, Baru is an original equipment manufacturer, supplier to uh, BMW. It's a very really good quality stuff made in Germany. All right, so what we're gonna do is actually start with the one that goes onto the spark plug wire down at this end because it's a whole lot easier to push this metal end through the grommet than it is to try to fish the grommet. You know, it's all floppy and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of silicone spray in this case and just give it a little dab inside WD-40, a lot of anything like that that has some lubrication qualities will work. Okay, getting, getting the wire through this, these grommets can be a little bit difficult, but it's a lot easier to push it through when you get this metal end on there than, than, the, than the soft end, at least in, that's how my experience has been. 
So it still can be a bit of a challenge. So if you have something like this, it works pretty well. Some kind of thin pliers or helostats where you can go in, get a piece of that, and then pull that through like that. And no damage done. So there we have that one. And then, then secondly, put on the one here for the coil connection. And that's pretty easy to do, it's to slip over that metal. And a little bit of lubrication isn't a bad thing to put on the end of the wire wood you're screwing it onto the connection so that you can really get a tight fit so you don't have that friction in, in the hole in the connector. Just apply pressure while you wind it all together like this. There we go, that feels good. And we slip this on all the way. And there you have it. Just a few minutes work and you have a high quality plug connector wire. So we'll go ahead and plug these in real quick to the coil. All right, let's see what's next. So how about the fuel tank? And okay, then we can get the uh, fuel lines all sorted out too. All righty. So we'll get the clips in here too. I even got, even got some new um, T connectors. And now it's time to just get this all sorted out. This fuel line works really well. You don't really need clamps or anything. It, it seals very, very well. Yeah, so I left this piece a little bit long when I, when I put it together. I'm just gonna cut about a centimeter or so off. Perfect. Okay, same on the other side. Okay, so that's that. Right, now we'll throw these battery covers on too. All right, so that's, now that even the battery covers are on there, look at it. Really, we're looking at an almost complete motorcycle here. We have such a little amount to do, still gonna throw some plugs in there. The reason I didn't do that today is I, the spark plugs, we, the ones I want to use are, they just showed up today in a shipment, so we're, We'll just have to wait till next time to put spark plugs in. But in the meantime, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fiddle around with this exhaust and get everything aligned just the way I like it. Get this little detail sorted out once I get the exhaust on there with the side stand. And then, um, yeah, we'll start this motor up. We'll tune it and we'll maybe even go for a nice little ride next time around. That'll be the last episode. This is. William from Boxer 2 Valve and I hope that you'll visit us online at boxer2valve.com. Join our newsletter if you haven't already. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you like what you see. Let us know. You'll find links to a lot of the things that we talked about or used on this video in the links below and also on our website um, at boxer2valve.com. So we look forward to uh, finishing up this project next time and hopefully it won't be terribly long because we are anxious to get this on the road before fall gets here. <laughs> and once again, it's William from BoxerTubeValve.com in Hendersonville, North Carolina saying see you next time and let's get this thing on the road. Bye.